What, a, what, a, what an inspiring panel, Marjan. Uh, and I want to thank the um, foreign ministers of, uh, of Georgia and Moldova and the defense minister of Macedonia. Uh, whenever any European Union citizens or NATO members start becoming a little uh, dispassionate about their organizations, I think one has to listen to this kind of panel to remember again what a force of stability and force for prosperity the European Union is and then the European Union combination of NATO, so thank you very much. Uh, which also recalls a conversation I had with our next speaker at the Munich Security Conference. Uh, it's my great pleasure to have the role of introducing one of Poland's most committed transatlanticists and a longtime friend of the Wrocław Global Forum. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of uh, Defense, Tomasz Szymoniak. Um, uh, Minister, Minister Szymoniak, I think you'll remember the conversation we had at the Munich Security Conference, where, first of all, you kindly committed to come back to the Wrocław Global Forum. We thank you for coming here again. But you also urged us to have just this kind of panel and just these kinds of ministers from around the region on an annual basis, not just this year, but, but every year. Uh, we were honored to host you in your first speech in Washington, D.C. as minister. We're honored to continue to have this relationship, not just here, uh, but in between now and the, uh, the NATO summit in Warsaw. Thank you for taking uh, time out of your busy uh, schedule. We understand that you have to travel onward shortly, so in the inter interest of time, I'll avoid a lengthy introduction and just take a moment to salute, salute you for the instrumental role you continue to play within the NATO alliance, and especially as we move forward toward the 2016 summit in Warsaw, by leading efforts to devise a new strategy that will make the alliance stronger, more relevant, and better able to respond to emerging challenges than it ha ever has before, you've become one of the Alliance's most crucial defense ministers. Not far from here in Zagan, over the course of the next week, NATO will be conducting the crucial exercise Noble Jump, uh, in which the Alliance will continue the process of testing uh, and refining the very high readiness joint task force. And so at this crucial moment, for the Alliance halfway between the NATO summit in Wales and the 2016 summit in Warsaw, we are delighted that you've come to address us here at the Wrocław Global Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Defense of Poland, His Excellency Tomasz Szymoniak. Szanowny Panie Ministrze. Minister, President, ladies and gentlemen, just as the CEO of the Atlantic Council has just said, we met during the Munich Security Conference. We talked about this conference, Wrocław Global Forum, and together we came to a conclusion that the Atlantic Council and the Polish government have the same goal. And this goal is how to get prepared uh, to the Warsaw NATO summit as well as possible. The NATO summit in Warsaw is going to take place in July 2016. The time since the meeting in Munich has passed very fast. Actually, it has flown. And it seems to me that we met yesterday in Munich, and today we are in Wrocław. It means that. There is not really very much time between now and the Warsaw NATO summit. Let me start with the expression of gratitude to, to the mayor of the city of Wrocław, Rafał Dudkiewicz. This conference every year is richer, better, more and more guests block the time for Wrocław in their calendars as a very important uh, event to participate in. I appreciate it very much, and I am really very happy to see so many great uh, people in the room, the patron of the conference, the president of the Republic of Poland, foreign minister, but also so many eminent foreign guests who have come to Wrocław. I was asked to say a few words about the way from Wales summit to Warsaw summit. Ladies and gentlemen, the annexation of Crimea and the Russian aggression in Ukraine challenged uh, 
uh, the uh, belief that there were no serious military threats along the eastern front line of NATO and the European Union. The Russian Federation allowing the use of armed forces to keep political influence in the region and introducing the new methodology for running military conflicts on the basis of hybrid measures challenged NATO, and we have to face up to this challenge. The Alliance has taken very specific steps in three areas. First of all, the practical military cooperation with the Russian Federation below the level of permanent representatives at NATO has been suspended. Short-term ad hoc um, assurance measures were adopted, as well as the medium and long-term adaptation measures have been uh, implemented according to the decisions of Newport of uh, September 2014 uh, were taken up. And a greater support was offered to our eastern partners, Ukraine in particular. The implementation of continuous and rotational presence uh, of allied forces along the eastern front line of NATO as long as it takes uh, uh, what Poland wanted to have and uh, the increase of the frequency uh, and order of magnitude of LIVEX exercises. Uh, in 2014, there were over 200 national and um, international exercises, as well as the enhancement of the Baltic air policing mission. These are very specific and tangible steps. The strengthening of the eastern uh, flank of the alliance is seen as new normal. The long-term objective is the structural strengthening of the readiness and capabilities of NATO to act. The Na Newport Summit, the most important meeting at NATO since we joined NATO, defined the directions of long-term transformation. The reform of the NATO Response Force has taken place uh, as a very a high readiness joint task force was established. Uh, the VJTF, uh, Mr. Kemp, mentioned that in a few days' time in Zhagany and Fintoshov <coughs> and it's in Lower Silesia region, so this is exactly very close by, uh, there will be the first live ex exercise uh, of the interim spearhead, interim VJTF, with the participation of troops coming from many nations, and I want to stress in particular the participation of the European allies, because it's uh, Germany, the Netherlands, and Norway uh, that play a role uh, of those nations that really make the biggest contribution to the spearhead force. And I believe that it's going to be a very important moment, a very specific and tangible moment on our way to the implementation of Newport commitments. Uh, we are looking forward to having Secretary General of NATO uh, at that exercise, and I am sure that there will be many defense ministers coming, those people who, with their presence in Świętoszów and in Zhagan, in the training ranges, they will want to uh, present their support for the implementation of the VJTF project. Moreover, a decision was uh, made to deploy uh, in uh, the uh, alliance uh, the NATO Force Integration Units. Uh, they are called nephews in NATO speak. We in Poland came to a conclusion uh, that uh, such a planning and command uh, unit will be placed in Poland in Bydgoszcz. The preparation has been completed during the noble jump exercise uh, the Polish nephew will already be used. And the uh, role of the headquarters of the multinational Corps Northeast in Szczecin was uh, increased, including in the command of the VJTF and nephews. As far as the Corps is concerned, the multinational Corps Northeast, in 2014, that was the 15th anniversary of the Corps, thanks to the decision of Newport, uh, it was given a totally new role. Framework nations, which is Poland, Germany, and Denmark, were ready to face up to the challenge to increase the level of readiness of the core and making it a permanent part of a NATO map. Thanks to that, now, very soon after that moment, uh, we already have 19 nations who applied for the core, including the United States, France, and our allies uh, could see in the core initiative a very important element of the enhancement of uh, the eastern front line of uh, NATO. Mentioning uh, the decisions of Newport, we definitely must not forget the initiation of the review of the uh, allied procedures for advanced planning. The readiness action plan that was adopted in Newport is a very important step indeed, and we expect that the 2016 summit in Warsaw will initiate another uh, move in the strategic adaptation of NATO. We tabled our proposal to this extent and uh, um, work uh, name for this is the Warsaw Initiative for Strategic Adaptation. 
uh, this was mentioned by our foreign minister uh, Schetina a few weeks ago in Turkey during the informal ministerial of foreign ministers at NATO. Uh, next week, um, or in two weeks' time, at the NATO ministerial of defense ministers in Brussels, I will also speak about it. And after consultations, I expect that it is going to become a good platform for the preparation of the summit in Warsaw. It will indicate very clearly that the current situation on the ground in Europe is not only incidental, it is only a temporary transient crisis. What we have in Europe has long-term consequences, and this is why it requires from the whole alliance the adaptation to be able to face up to the new challenge, and not only ad hoc measures that can be easily recalled. That is why we want to strengthen all the assets and capabilities of NATO, and not only those units that are meant uh, for the immediate response. We need uh, structural decisions which will guarantee the Alliance better capabilities of strong uh, uh, reinforcement of Eastern countries in case of growing threat. The trends. Uh, concerning low-end combat capabilities are quite concerning. It is necessary to increase the credibility of conventional deterrence, as well as the growth of common funding of uh, development of uh, defense infrastructure along the eastern front line of NATO that would allow uh, the uh, reception of the uh, allied reinforcement. The basic conclusions for the alliance resulting from the new security situation are as follows. The collective defense must continue to be the priority for NATO. Significant shift of accent during the last decade on a crisis response. Partially justified by the situation in the hotbeds of conflict, however, did not lead to the strengthening of the security of the Eastern Front Line. It is necessary to strike the right balance between the NATO's tasks. The crucial thing is the political cohesion of the alliance. This is the basis of the uh, allied uh, deterrence and the defense policy. It is not possible to keep the military efficiency and effectiveness of the alliance without a strong transatlantic bond. The engagement of the United States uh, turned out to be a crucial premise for the implementation of ad hoc assurance measures for the eastern flank and long-term adaptation. The basis for this bond has been real engagement of the United States in the European security and ally the solidarity. American presence in Europe, however, is not unconditional. Europe must be able to positively respond to American expectations connected with slowing down uh, that drop and then gradually increasing the real defense spendings. At the achievement of the level of 2% GDP that was adopted at Newport, it is absolutely a must today. Poland takes this uh, commitment very seriously, and we already talked about it today, and we encourage our European allies to take similar efforts. NATO must strengthen strategic thinking in Eastern policy. First of all, it is about a new, disillusioned, realistic policy vis-à-vis -vis Russia on the basis of the uh, assessment of interest. The so far format has not uh, proved successful. There was too much of wishful thinking in that. Secondly, we need a more active engagement of NATO in the support of reform process in defense sector uh, amongst the, our Eastern partners who are focused on European integration, like Ukraine, Moldova, or Georgia. We have to seek new possibilities of cooperation that strengthen Euro-Atlantic course in the policy taken by these states. The crisis strengthened also the necessity of structural cooperation between NATO and the EU. The current reflection in the European Union on the development of strategic political frameworks that can take a very specific shape during the meeting of the European Council later in June creates a great opportunity to talk about uh, the relationship between the two organizations. Poland does not only formulate expectations from others. We also demonstrate our real engagement for our own security and for the security of the whole NATO by means of a very specific program for the modernization of the Polish armed forces that is supported by the right funding. Thanks to this, our voice in the discussion in the alliance is better heard. We would like these issues uh, to be properly reflected during NATO's uh, summit in Warsaw. We are aware that it is not that everything is up to us, but we have will and we are, have determination to make sure that the summit in Warsaw uh, um, is used uh, properly to the maximum extent. I would like to add to this the wishes. President Zaborowski uh, just uh, announced concerning the openness of the Warsaw summit to new members and uh, our so far partners. I believe that it would be excellent news if it was from Warsaw that the invitation could be sent uh, to Macedonia and uh, Montenegro. 
I have a great friend of uh, uh, mine, uh, uh, a great friend of mine here, Zoram Zaleski, and I believe that everyone has heard properly uh, how well he expressed the Macedonian aspiration to become part of NATO and part of uh, the European Union. From the perspective of a defense minister, I can say that Macedonia is the best tested partner in NATO. Without engagement of Macedonia for many years, uh, we wouldn't have been able to have the mission in Kosovo. And I believe that it is one of so many reasons for which we should have a special perspective on Macedonia. And I am sure that we will work on it. Well, Montenegro, for the stability of the Balkans, it has great significance. So it seems uh, that NATO summit in Warsaw, if it is uh, deprived of this particular element, it will not uh, give full satisfaction to many nations, including Poland. Once again, I would like to thank you very much for inviting me to speak at the forum. I believe that the discussion both yesterday and today refers to the current situation very much. I remember the meeting last year. Last year, uh, we were in the moment of very hot em emotions and situations connected to the situation in the eastern part of Ukraine. Today, we are now moving on towards strategic reflection and long-term adaptation of the West, Poland, the whole alliance. So I really wish everyone to have so many interesting ideas and conclusions coming out of this discussion. For those who are responsible for the security of their, uh, of their nations, uh, these uh, the conclusions are going to be very important. Thank you very much indeed.